Welcome to HSC TV's Weekly Roundup. I'm Josefina Bergsten. Burma is the focus of this week's program. The thaw following decades of military dictatorship has raised hope that respect for human rights and the rule of law will follow. But according to legal professionals and human rights defenders, Burma has a long way to go to fulfill such expectations. Some argue that the turn towards democratization and freedoms is cosmetic and that real power is still firmly in military hands, i.e. those averse to opposition. Let us first turn to the rule of law in light of illegal land grabbing committed by the government and the military. The government has promised to return such illegally acquired land. It is so far an empty promise. AHRC TV interviews Mr. George Varshve, Program Director at the Loka Alin Social Development Network and Director at the Myanmar Institute for Democracy to learn more. Uh, ဟိုလုံးမောက်တီအာရှင်စနစ်ဖြစ်တဲ့ပဲကြောင့်ဒီတရားဝီလေးဆုံးမှုမှုဆိုတော့ပြီးစာကအတာအများကြီးကျွန
Burmese lawyer Tun Lai is more optimistic that the justice mechanism is moving in the right direction, although he notes a lack of separation between the state and the judiciary when it comes to political cases. Here is Mr. Lai. เอ่อเตยาตุจีเดคันทามุงเนี่ยยูริชยูริชิโนลอสอินดิเปนเดนต์ดาดิเมียนมาไนเงมามะชีบูลุจินอลุทินเนปาลุซุโรเตยาตุ
Since the Parliament cannot ensure the rule of law, assistance of the executive branch is necessary, Aung San Suu Kyi had noted. Finally, to comprehend how precarious the rule of law situation is in Burma, HRC TV speaks to human rights defender Min Rin Wu. Mr. Wu is concerned that perpetrators of a notorious massacre in 2003, when Aung San Suu Kyi's supporters were attacked, are still committing murder, rape and disappearances. We call it it's a Tibetan massacre. Uh, happened in 30th May 2003. Uh, it's a st state sponsor. And at that time, some of the Union Solidarity and Development Association members and then around the 5,000, and then they put in one of the high school and look like the camps, and then how to beat, and then how to attack. And then also they order some of, they bring some of the carpenters to make a weapons. It's a bamboo stick and sharp bamboo stick and wooden bag, and then iron rod and something like that. And then after that, they give the training in this camp. And then after that, at that time, Dong San Suu Kyi was released from house arrest. And then so she recognized her NLD party office and then organizing trip the whole country. And so a lot of people welcome and uh, are happy to join the event and then mostly they love their Aung San Suu Kyi and then they show their supports and then government is shocked. How many people is daily going on and welcome and invite and then so that is why they create these events. 30th May, uh, 1,000 troops uh, 1,000 Tat groups tailed by Aung San Suu Kyi convoy and then 3,000 men waiting to first area of the killing fee. And then it's happened in the Chi village. It's the dark night and then started to attack the tailor groups and then they start to attack. At that time, and then some of the drivers said, uh, our leaders, you must run. And then she ran this. At that time, they start attack. And during this event, and then 70 people die. But we cannot get even the body. But Aung San Suu Kyi escaped this event. But after that, she was uh, stopped by police. And then she asking, and then she filed the case, but they didn't happen. At that time, next day, Aung San Suu Kyi sent to prison, and then some of the wounded person, they sent to the military hospital, and then after that, they sent to other remote country, a remote prison for long times. At that time in Dipayan Massacre, they used uh, some of the Tak folks they call Swan Asian. And then it's now look like a legal association and then run by uh, now USDP, Union Development and Solidary Party. Uh, holding the power. And then some of the minister, former minister, he run this group. And then th that is why they can create so many times. And then, for example, in the Rakhine state, they create the religious conflict uh, with uh, Rohingya and native Rakhine people. And then also in central Burma, area, Megtila, and then they create religious conflict, uh, Muslim and Buddhist. And then recently happened in the Mandali, also they created, now they know how to create and how to 
uh, hiding, how to run, how to manage. Because of all of four or five events happening, but nobody can arrest it. Nobody bring to the court. This group stay walking on. Uh, that is why it's very dangerous for uh, some politicians and some activists and some civil society uh, leaders, and then they can attack by this dark force anytime. These are the stories for this week's weekly roundup. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.humanrights.asia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.